films reach us as reels, you know, as reels. So that comes from the edit department. Now, this starts at a stage when the edit is locked at, at a very early stage. The assembly, uh, they're quite has, happy with the assembly on the avid, I mean, the, the edit. So once uh, the director, the producer have uh, kind of an idea of how the film is going to be, they finalize this particular cut and they give reels to the sound department. The sound department being the sound designer or a, sound, a supervising sound editor. So he is given the, uh, the video, uh, the reels and they start working on it, uh, starting from the dialogues. I mean, that's a general practice. So the sound designer himself works or he assigns other people to handle those tasks? Yeah. So the sound designer or the supervising sound editor, I mean, they, sometimes those uh, you know, uh, roles, they kind of go in and out. Okay. Sometimes the same person. Sometimes there's a supervising uh, sound editor who is taking care of the actual work. Sound designer is actually taking care of the creative part, you know. Sometimes these, most of the time, uh, for example, um, most of the designers here, they, they are like sound designers as well as supervising sound editors, you know. Okay. So, um, they have a, a, a team working under them. Okay. One team would be, uh, say, the dialogue editors. The second would be uh, the sound effects, you know, sound effects meaning uh, ambience, so, uh, you know, specific spot effects, uh, then folly. And then there is another, there's another uh, segment that they take care of, which are crowd dubs, you know. I mean, like, for example, if it depends on how you know, the film is. If the fire film need, requires a lot of crowd, then there's somebody who's taking care of that also. He'll mark out things, you know. Once the reel reaches the sound editing team or sound department, they uh, see the film, uh, they extract uh, audio for the, for the dialogues from whatever sources that they have, for example, an AF that is supplied or an OMF that is supplied and they sometimes try to reconform the entire reel and therefore the entire film that way and uh, they, they clean it up, they make dubless, you know, that is predominantly done by the dubbing, you know, the dialogue team, that dialogue editing team. So they clean, they put up the notes, it's shared by the sound designer. And while the sound designer is getting notes from the dialogue editing team, parallelly, the sound editing team is working on the sound effects, sure. you know. So, dialogue editing team is working, the sound editing team is working. Um, they would probably start off with ambiences, the sound editing team, ambiences and then uh, big sound effects sequences that they have to tackle. They need a lot of time. They spend time for that. Um, they do a lot of, you know, reiterations on the design. They bounce it back to the director for his his views and finally they, he, they get it approved. And sometimes this also happens, like for example, uh, if there's a big action sequence that's involved in the film, that particular sequence comes early to the sound designer. So he has a lot of time to think about it, design it, you know, and uh, give it a convincing shape. And he bounces that back to the director the editor and all, and they come to a certain understanding of how the f this this section is going to be, and that keeps happening for the big sequences. You know, the time progresses, the soundtrack develops, the dialogues uh, are also you know f are taking its complete shape. Uh, then they will uh, sort out you know um, you know portions where they have to dub extra crowds. So these notes are made what in the project file itself or no? It can be anyway, handwritten, handwritten or, or Excel sheet or whatever. Okay. But the point is, there's a lot of coordination, very structured coordination that is going on. Yeah, there will be a lot of confusion. Exactly, exactly. The sound designer exactly has uh, what is going on, you know, okay. under his uh, in one of his note notepads. And it is real one, real two, real three, or it can be any real first. Ideally, that's, that's how it should be. But there are some certain priorities. For example, some of the some of the resources available in terms of actors or crowd or the studio availability, those are factors where, um, factors which would decide what should come, what should be done first and all. Right. So the sound designer fairly has an idea how to handle that. He works closely with the production, gets out the, the dates for the studios and gets it done. So that's generally what is happening. So that is the sound part, the dialogue and the sound effects part. 
but the sound of the film is not just dialogues and and the sound effects there is the music department also and music department also has two of them one is the score and the other is a the song the song uh, actually starts its journey from a very early stage um, when the studio when the studio decides you know they should make a film a production house a production company decides they should make a film based on a script uh, then they would decide whether songs are required so the those people who are doing the songs you know the song, the music directors as we call them uh, they would be informed earlier and they would start to jam and you know sort out ideas you know shortlist ideas and they'll come up with four or five tunes and those things will be will be always you know you know being developed right. even as in the process of dialogue and sound effects editing happens once before it reaches the final mix the songs are in a good shape i mean almost the final shape uh, the shape in which these masters go out for the final you know cut the final cd cut or the or the or the or the itune cut whatever that is and that is what reaches us as multiple stems for us to work here on the same song it's not given as a stereo no stereo stereo stems not one stereo but stereo stems okay. so that's about the song now the scoring part now the scoring thing has to happen once the once the film is in shape correct so the music director would have been locked earlier he will have some few, some of the ideas already there parked in his mind okay this is the film i'm going to make this is the space um let me work some ideas he'll put it there but probably he doesn't work on it until he reach and until these reach uh, these reels reaches the reels reach him you know they have to uh, sit on the reels uh, put those tunes on it see how it works and then uh, they develop the score probably to you know uh, a certain you know temporary score that is already put i mean that that could be the reference because the director al- always has a temp music you know that's run, running but eventually it is a it is the music director's uh piece its creation that sits finally on the film you know so that happens uh the song is has already happened the dialogue is happening sound effects are happening they all converge at one point in this particular room so your role still hasn't started until everything is finalized yeah correct yeah and you know some overlaps happen because if uh, say for example the dialogue department has completed its job you can start working we can start it. working on it okay. so we start the work slowly the sound effects would come in uh, the next would be the probably the song that is coming in and then it will be the score that is coming in so we have them all together in this uh, in this room so many files yeah i mean it's like of labeling course, thanks to pro tools here you know we have i know but still, <laughs> I, i mean every department has to label it correctly yeah that's a valid point most of uh, i mean i mean all all departments of uh, our studio or this workflow they follow a a very uh, disciplined tracking you know they know that this has to be done it this way otherwise it will get a, a, a lot of mess a lot messier you know here in in the final mix stage and this also helps them in a certain way i'll tell you how if there is some doubt regarding the sound that they have sent already and if they want to come and check they'll check and they'll be looking exactly at this at their at their tracks here because we are capable of running you know so much of uh, uh, tracks so many number of tracks here and probably they'll be looking at the, the exact way they have sent their tracks here so it's very important that they uh, keep that you know that consistency throughout you know the film and i told you uh, this happens in reels you know the we for a film the work happens in reels and what is a reel it's a 20 minute at least a 20 minute long part of a film so if there's a, if it's a 3 hour film or a sorry 2 hour film then it'll, it'll be broken down to 20 minutes each so every 20 minute is called a reel it's i mean i'm just saying a, a, just putting a number on it 20 minutes could be 15 it could be 21 whatever but what i'm saying is every reel will have the same nomenclature the same structure of sessions and they'll be maintaining it in their their respective uh, studios so when it reaches when it's when it when it's you know uh, steps down towards the final mix they'll be maintaining that 
that that uniformity throughout the work you know and uh, again it it makes things a lot easier for us to spot things we know acha this is a format that is coming for this particular film so okay so this must be between between say track number this and track number that i am i'm sure this is going to be there this particular sound is going to be there and we being here we are like uh, basically we study we study the tracks and we know if something is wrong we know exactly where to where to spot them okay. so even if it runs into say 700 tracks on his machine we exactly know because of how we've managed the tracking uh, um, that's a discipline that we follow that's really important that's very important that's very important so yeah. do you end up pulling your hair while you know kind of working not on projects not exactly no okay it's no. not because you've lost it's part of it <laughs> <laughs> so that's that, no connection no. those are the late nights <laughs> Right. So when the final mix starts, yeah, the sound designer has to be everywhere, dubbing, uh, sound effects. Then he has to come and sit here with you also. Uh, thankfully, in this setup, in in whatever that I've explained so yeah. far, by the time it is uh, the final mix stage, the sound designer must have himself freed himself for, for all those things. I mean, he would have made his schedules work in such a way that he's able to concentrate on the final mix, also, you know, and his things are not not overlapping with other schedules. So that's how it generally happens here. And thanks to the system that we have here, it's it's much disciplined. The supervisor, the sound, the supervising sound editor, if he's able to coordinate this beautifully, then it's it's a it's a cakewalk. Right. But then hats off to that man who makes it happen you know yeah talking of the workflow that we have uh, just to recap things uh, we have a few studios that supply audio to the sound designer one is the dubbing studio other is the foley studio and then the third one is the sound effects the track laying studio so uh, the dubbing is done by a dubbing engineer the foley studio handles all the foley sounds or the inf- incidental sounds the footsteps the incidental sounds these are all recorded by a foley team performed by a foley team recorded by a foley engineer okay and they give a synced session of these sounds to the sound designer the third the sound under the sound designer works a sound editing team Uh, which works on the rest of the sound for example the ambiences the cars the jets gunshots gunshots all the action punches kicks all so the sound designer has these studios working under him and he puts all these things together in his uh, final mix uh, or rather the the finalizing stage that he has puts them together plays back and that's how he reviews before he transfers that particular session to the final mix stage that is what we do here music department is uh, uh, mostly in the mostly handled by the music studio itself okay. because um, the studios that we have especially the ones that we have above and below uh, they cater to re-recording they cater to a song mix these are all different things so uh, when it, when they when they say that this is a, a material for the score then they track it for us that way you know those many number of tracks are labeled uh, tracked properly and they send it as either as sessions or bounced wafers but these are all done by the music department the music studio okay. so uh, they say these are premixes for the final mix so the sound designer has nothing to do with uh, he this? generally doesn't have but of course he takes references from uh, the score so he will be in touch with sometimes in touch with the music studio to send hey please send me the the bounce of the studio mm-hmm. that you're working on so that i can make some tweaks here so that that keeps happening especially in uh, in our in our setup that that keeps happening so the sound designer will ask uh, either the music engineer down or up uh, he will say uh, i need that particular reels score so that i can tweak my sound effects so that uh, if he takes care of that then so much of clarity comes in the soundtrack there are no clashes so that coordination also keeps happening you know during the process yeah 
Yeah, this is wire of studios. Uh, we have three uh, Pro Tools machines here. On the first machine, we have three HDX cards, which means uh, over 700 uh, voices in 48K. Uh, and the second one, which we run the sound effects. Here we run the dialogues and music. Here we run the, the sound effects. So we have a lot of machine power here in helping us do the, the final mix. And uh, we have a third machine there, that is a recorder where we print the final mix. And this is the place uh, our chief engineer, Anand sits, and he operates on an S6. And S6 is a control surface. It reflects exactly what you know the session has uh, in them. Uh, and we use VCAs to do our mixes on the SX, and that's how we do. Uh, having the S6 is a great blessing because it gives a comprehensive view of what we have as you know, our soundtracks. And we are able to you know, uh, uh, click and open and have extreme control, minute control on our stems, you know, and we work on master, uh, master VCAs. So we have, uh, uh, you know, setups where we can split into slaves and we can work on the slaves and all. So having this workflow really is helping us uh, meet the fast delivery of our sounds here. Uh, the, they need to have things done very fast. This is really helping us. Yeah, that's basically what we do here.